in essence multiplied us across the lands in order that we get to know each other. That's the pronouncement that's come from God Almighty. But unfortunately, the history of our lives has shown that it's been nothing but a lot of wars, uh, destruction, etc. And we thought this particular ayah was extremely relevant given our topic today because what we're trying to do here really through impact our Muslim Public Affairs Council's uh, democracy series around the world, around the U.S., inshallah, I hope we go around the world, um, is to really bring to light um, what we all need to be doing as American citizens, as American Muslims, to help bridge this bipartisan divide that's becoming greater by each and every day. So we are holding a similar series in, we've already done it in Washington, D.C. at a law firm, at a multinational law firm. We had a great audience attendance there. Ro Khanna, who's a congressman out of California, came to speak out there. We are doing this in Houston. We're talking about voting access, voting rights. We're doing it in Atlanta. And Chicago is our, I would say, our one of our bigger events. all of us to stand together. We are all together in this and we're all working together even when we don't agree on everything. And we have to stay together. And not voting is not an option today, by the way. Not an option. But how do you keep up the momentum when you're actually thinking about the erosion of our democracy, democratic backsliding, our democracy not functioning as it should? And it hasn't been for decades. Um, how do you focus attention on that? If you look at the organizations, again, that are involved in tonight's event, they're all working in coalition. It's not about one organization. The Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition, um, I mean, came about, what, three, four years ago? Maria, I'm looking right at you. Three, four years ago. And it's one of the most active organizations across the U.S. of American Muslims and just generally of Americans involved in democracy reform. MPAC, same thing. MPAC is not just doing this work as MPAC. They're working actively with CIOGC, Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition, the um, folks over at Engage, and they're they're doing it also with larger civil rights organizations. Um, I don't know if a lot of folks in the room know, but MPAC is part of the leadership conference as well, uh, which is one of the oldest coalition organizations around civil rights. Um, if I'm the only one at the table, I'm not doing my job because we're never really the only ones at the table because we are actively pulling up chairs for others. Disinformation and misinformation foments polarization and um, divides us as citizens. Right. When you look at communities, are we fractured or are we together? Right. And so what we learned as a community was that we were a bubble. I mean, we were a community that was looking inward, you know, building our next generation of Muslim leaders and not necessarily looking at other institutions, other organizations. And what happened in the last two decades is that we've become a bridging community, right? We opened our mosques. We opened our um, institutions, we created institutions to tell people who we are. And that's not Islam is means peace. I mean, those were some of the early messages, but it was really through our service, through <clears throat> the work that we did around everything from disaster recovery to food pantry to being active members in our communities. That to me is the evolution of the last two years. And so when President Obama says, you know, democracy is not self-executing, I think it means like, you can't just sit around and lament at everything bad that is going on. I mean, I think what we have to do is play an active role in our democracy. And that is something anybody can do. You don't have to be a congresswoman to do it. It's amazing. Um, but it's something that each and every one of us should do, even if we're lawyers or doctors or any of that, you know. And so I think understanding um, what our role is and you know what we can do what we you can do it every day and that's what Zinab is saying is is that no matter what you do when you talk about um, the beauty of your faith and the beauty of the people and the and the beauty of the kindness and the respect and the brilliance of the people and what they bring to this country that's when we're making really big bridges and I'm hearkened back to your um, op-ed um, um, that you and your colleague Salam uh, wrote um, Domestic terrorism is not just um, a problem because it makes our community scarier and um, there are uh, criminals running about. It is scary because it goes at our democracy and it can break it down. So you have a powerful story, right? Your uh, members of your family are first generation. Tell that story about how those challenging environments and why you came here and why it's important for us to hang on to democracy and protect it for all democracy those Democracy is on its heels. You know, do we have the institutions to live up to the promise of democracy here? 
How do we have a Congress that allows its Congress people to deliver on the promises that they want to deliver on as well? But I, the reality is democracy is in decline globally. So it's a challenge that we as thought leaders, as community leaders, have really a lot to look towards. Is we should be really clear about who the us versus them is. You know, and it's not Muslims versus evangelicals. It's not Democrats versus Republicans, right? It's, and we've been demonized as a community, so we should know what that feels like. And the us is the people who care to live in this democracy and make it better and more vibrant. And I think, you know, the them are the hate-filled, you know, white supremacists who want this country to only be for a small amount of people. But at MPAC, we've created a very uh, important program called Mustard Seed. And what that does is it literally engages evangelicals around the country. And we have a documentary coming, about, coming out about work that was done where we engaged with an evangelical community. A Christian lady who passed away gave us some grant from her um, to, to build interfaith bridges. A doctor named Dr. Islam, a, a, a female doctor, took care of patients in Lubbock at the height of COVID. And we have video from the Christians from this community crying and saying, we prayed for you, for your good well-being, for what you did for us. That's incredible. Uh, so incremental wins are good, and you should keep doing those, but it's fighting on every front and being very bold, because when you're very bold, it takes notice. So um, I encourage everybody to be bold. Be fearless. Be absolutely fearless. This is our challenge. Who are we? What are we? Are we going to continue to be a democracy? What are we going to do to make sure that our democracy is intact? But this is our challenge, but it is also our opportunity right now to, as Americans, as voters, to make the decision about who we, who are we, and what are we. Let's remember we are a nation of immigrants. Let's make sure that we keep it to be the country that we want, to be the country that can define what democracy is for ourselves and for people around the world, to give hope, to be that beacon on the